And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. dragon called the devil or satan was held down to earth and his angels with him. And there were giants on the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The ancient Hebrews refer to these fallen angels as Bnei Elohim, meaning the sons of God. The Bible reveals to us that these angels were present at the creation of the heavens and the earth. Although they are spiritual beings, they can take on the form of man, just as Jesus did. But when angels take on the form of flesh, they become subject to the flaws and temptations of the flesh. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. These fallen angels who had sought to corrupt the seed of men after their departure from heaven, and subsequently produced a race of giants across the earth. Tall in stature like the angels, these giants often stood anywhere between 10 to 30 foot in height. This hybrid offspring, known as the Nephilim, would later set themselves up to be kings and rulers ruling over the rest of humanity, while their original fallen angels would later come to be known and worshipped as the pagan gods of ancient times. These Nephilim giants, who were brutal and cruel in nature, treated ordinary human beings with contempt. Through angelic knowledge, the pre flood world had become corrupt. The Book of Enoch says that the Nephilim and their children sinned against all flesh, creating hybrid creatures which were part human, part beast, and they corrupted the nature of all things. And God looked down upon his creation and saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord's heart was full of pain. The gene pool of the human race had become tainted, almost beyond recovery. But God saw one who was perfect in all his generations, for Noah had found favour in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord commanded Noah to build an ark and to gather with him two of every creature and bird of their own kind, both male and female. Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone have I seen to be righteous before me. The fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the Lord caused it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, flooding the entire world and destroying all that remained in it.
After the flood, God sent down 200 angels to earth to help mankind. The books of Enoch and Daniel refer to these angels as the Watchers. Their purpose was to watch over mankind and to teach them righteousness, but instead they fell into sin like the original fallen ones who were cast out of heaven. These angels, seduced by their earthly lusts, taught mankind the forbidden arts of astrology, witchcraft, drug abuse and the killing of innocents inside the womb. A chief fallen angel by the name of Azazel taught men the art of warfare, the making of swords, knives, shields and coats of nails. He also taught women the art of deception by decorating the body, dyeing the hair and painting the face and eyebrows. He also revealed to the people the secrets of witchcraft which corrupted their manners, leading them into wickedness and impurity once again. Until at last he was bound by the Lord's command by the Archangel Raphael chained to the rough and jagged rocks of where he is to abide in utter darkness until the great day of judgment. The newly fallen ones would once again produce the race of giants across the earth. We find references to these giants all throughout the Old Testament, most notably the story of David and Goliath. When Moses sends out twelve spies to the land of Canaan, they come back reporting to him, and there we saw the giant, the son of Anak, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight also. These giants, with their hatred for mankind, continued in their attempts to corrupt and destroy the bloodline of the coming Messiah. But God had chosen a shepherd boy by the name of David to slay the remnants of the giants to wipe out the Nephilim from the face of the earth. And David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, from whom you have defied. David fulfilled part of the prophecy, while Jesus would later come to fulfill the second part of it. This is the first prophecy that is found in the Bible, and it is a prophecy of God's bloodline triumphing over Satan's offspring. The remains of these giants have been found on every continent all over the world. They were recorded and referred to by many ancient sources, historians, early church fathers, native tribes and ancient peoples. Many legends and myths that we have today are adoptions and variations of the original stories taught from the beginning of time. It was not until the 4th century that the teachings of the fallen angels and the Nephilim were abolished, and books containing details of these fallen angels were removed from the scriptures. In a place called Belbek, monolithic stone blocks can be seen. These structures are older than the Mayan and Inca temples and are so precisely put together that even by today's standards and technology, it would be impossible to replicate. The Trilophon stones are the largest solid stone blocks in the world, each weighing an estimated 1,500 tonnes. We have no modern day crane or machinery that could lift anywhere near that weight. Thousands of these stones have been cut, quarried and moved many miles. Within the Belbeck ruins, many artefacts, grave sites and tombs have been discovered as well, containing evidence for these giants.
During the 1700s and 1900s in Europe and the United States, massive excavations of great burial chambers began. These numerous serpent mounds contain massive sized skeleton remains of gigantic heights and proportions. All throughout various countries and cultures, people have found similar burial sites. The origins of giants and beastly creatures are rooted from the fallen angels, but have been adopted and changed throughout the world's diverse cultures.